Hey everybody, it's Tracking Pad again, and today I'm working with the Prototrack SLX lathe, and I'm gonna show you how to make a part that looks a lot like the trailer hitch ball that you would hook a boat or something up to the back of your truck. Here's what the print looks like. And as you can see here that the part is round, so it's gonna start from zero, zero, and go all the way through the process here. I'm gonna do this entire thing using an outside cycle event, and I'm also gonna show you a few tricks on how to use math help and things like that while we're inside. So to get started, we're at the main menu, and I'm going to just hit the program, and you'll see that I've already put the name ball hitch in here, so I just have to push go to begin. So what we're gonna do is this entire thing is going to be done inside of an outside cycle. So I'm gonna start by going to cycle, and it's asking me where I wanna begin. My beginning point is just zero, zero, so I'm gonna hit the absolute key twice. All right, now it's asking me for depth of pass, and I'm gonna tell it that I'm gonna use 60 thousandths as my roughing and my depth of pass. My approach is gonna be using the Z axis, which you see from the green box is asking me to select X or Z. So I select Z, hit the set key, and then I'm gonna use 400 surface footage. Okay, so I'll put that in there. I'm gonna put my chip load at eight thousandths per revolution, and I'm gonna do the entire part using tool number one. Now it's asking me for finish cut, and this is one of those places, as I've described in previous videos, that if I use the help key, I can actually separate my finish cuts for my diameters to be different than they are on my faces, and this will help me keep uh, the chatter to a minimum, if not completely uh, eliminated, okay? So I'm gonna put my, my rough finish cut at 20 thousandths, and I'm gonna put my actual Z finish cut at only two, and then I'm gonna use the same surface footage, but I'm going to knock down the thousands per rev to six thousands. Also using tool number one as my finish tool. So there we go, we're at the beginning and now it wants to know what I'm gonna do first. So from the print, I've got a radius in here that's basically three quarters of an inch, okay, which makes it one, uh, one and a half inches in diameter. And so the very first thing I'm gonna do is a cycle arc and it says the direction of the arc. So from start to finish, it's going clockwise. So one for clockwise. It's asking me for an X end and on our print, you'll see that it's 0.8125 in diameter, but what's missing on this print is the Z dimension, okay? And so normally I'd have to trig this out or maybe go back and ask somebody how to uh, calculate what it is for me, but in my case, I'm gonna go to help and I'm gonna use the math help. And what I'm looking for is an intersection of a line and an arc, okay? So if you look for line arc intersection, it's under B. And the very first one, type 13 says, find the intersection of a line and arc when you know any two points on the line and the arc center and radius, okay? So that's the one I'm looking for, and I'm just gonna fill in the blank. So my first X dimension is that 0.8125, and I'm just gonna use zero. My second dimension is also 8125, but I'm gonna use minus three inches to create a line with that. Next thing it's asking me for is the center of my radius and what the actual radius is. So the X center is minus, or actually the X center is zero, and the Z center is minus 0.75, and the radius is 0.75. You'll see from the illustration in here that it solved the problem. However, it's not giving me the correct solution. So I'm gonna push next solution. And then right here it says, okay, solution two of two. And I can tell from that red dot that it's in the right place. So all I have to do is push load end and then hit the back key. And you'll see that it put the answer right into my program, okay? So I hit the absolute key to select that, tell it that it is a three quarter inch radius and then it's asking me if I want to put a chamfer at the end of the radius. In our case, we actually have a radius on the end of the arc, and it's telling me that that radius is an eighth of an inch. So when you look in the green box, it's telling me to get a Conrad or a radius, just use the incremental set key. So I'm gonna put 0.125 ink set, and if you look so far, I've just got an arc, okay? So the next thing I'm gonna do is a turning event. My X stays the same, so I'm gonna just use the ink set key, and my Z on my print goes to a negative two and an eighth. It also has a 1 8 Conrad, so 0.125 ink set again. As you can see, there's part of it. The last thing I'm going to do is come out to my finished diameter for the stem. So I'm gonna turn straight out. I'm gonna come out to a diameter of an inch and a half. My Z is gonna stay the same, so ink set. And there's no chamfer in this case on that corner. Okay, now I've got one more turn to do, which is for the full length of the part. So my X diameter doesn't change, ink set. My Z full length is three inches and an eighth, so minus 3.125. And there's no chamfer here either. So if you look, my part is almost completed. But the one thing that people forget to do, and that's why I'm gonna point it out right here, is that my material is actually one inch 675. So I'm gonna turn one more time and come out to that dimension, 1.675. 
leave the Z where it is, and then there's no chamfer as well. So when I look at the part now, you can see that out here, I came out to the actual dimension for the material. Now all I have to do is close this box to show it how it's going to remove it, okay? So I'm gonna hit the look key again. I'm going to go to position. I'm gonna say, leave the X where it is, bring the Z to zero. End cycle, it's asking me, do you want me to close the box? I'm gonna say yes, and when you look, the dotted lines are showing the previous material, the solid lines are showing the finished part. So everything looks good so far. I've already set up my tool, but just so you can see, if I go to the tool table, I have my right turn face tool in here with the radius in it, and that looks correct. I'm gonna to go to the tool path, and in here you can see all the cuts for how it's gonna rough out the piece part. So far, it looks really good. Hit the back key, and if I go to verify part, you'll also see in the process how it's going to do what it's going to do. Okay, so as you can see, the part looks correct in the solid model, so all we have left to do now is just to run the part. So first I'm gonna push exit and say, yes, I wanna get out of the solid model. Hit the mode key, go to the run mode, and in the run mode, it's asking me where I wanna start, the beginning or somewhere in the process. I'm gonna start at the very beginning. It's telling me when you're ready, push go. In my case, I'm gonna use tracking as I always do, and just dial it back to the home position. Okay, so I'm ready to make the parts. Tell me turn on the spindle, load tool number one, which is in it. Just push forward, and then I'm in the tracking mode already, so when I push go, I'm telling it that I'm ready to track. By tracking it through the first part of the process, now I know for sure that I'm clear of the chuck and everything looks good. So at this point, I'm just gonna hit the stop button, go to CNC run, and let it make the whole part. And what you're gonna see is it's gonna start to rough the outside, then it's gonna rough the front of the ball, then it's gonna rough the back of the ball, and then it's gonna complete the process. So here we go.
Okay, and there you have it. So there's a completed hitch ball. And as you can tell, I also used a very pointed tool to make sure that the backside wouldn't drag on the backside of the actual sphere as it was cutting it. You may actually have to use something that's more of a button tool that's a full 180 radius in order to do certain parts like this, just depending on what the geometry of it is. Hopefully this helps you a little bit with knowing how to use the math help, as well as understand the outside cycle a little more when you're going both in and out towards center. And I will see you in the next video. Don't forget to keep on tracking. Hey everybody, it's Tracking Pat, and today I'm here with the customer service department, reminding you that when you guys call in with some sort of an issue, one of these fine people are the ones that answer the phone and help you and get you back on your way to running and making parts. If you like the videos, don't forget to hit the like button. And of course, if you'd like to subscribe, just hit this button over here. And of course, if you'd like to watch the next video that's coming up, just hit the button over here. As always, we appreciate you watching. And most of all, and most importantly, don't forget to keep, keep on, on tracking. tracking.